right. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome. Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I know that you've seen that poll. Um, if you're ready to get rid of that poll, you can just click that X so that it kind of leaves your screen. Um, <clears throat> again, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We would like to start by thanking the Navy Child and Youth Programs for making today's webinar, Helping Your Middle School or High School Student Thrive Possible. Uh, thank you for taking our poll. We do see that we have professionals joining us today. Um, and again, thanks for being here. We always welcome professionals who work with military connected children to our parent trainings. And I think you will find the information and the tips that are presented today useful. But do please note that these um, parent support webinars, the MSEC parent support webinars, have been designed with parents as our target audience. So before we get going, let me take a second and introduce MSEC or the Military Child Education Coalition, um, as we like to refer to it as MSEC. It is a nonprofit organization established more than 20 years ago. And our mission is to support all military connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve educational challenges associated with the military lifestyle. In 2005, MSEC formalized support and programming for military connected parents like yourselves so that they may be empowered, informed, and proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. We strive to deliver informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and emotional issues associated with a military family lifestyle. Our vision is that every military connected child is college, work, and life ready. So a couple of administrative announcements before we get started. Um, at the end of the webinar today, we would invite you to take our survey about today's presentation, and we would really appreciate it if you would just take those two or three minutes that it requires to give your feedback. This is a key method that we use to tell our funders what we're doing and to let us know where we need to tweak things or how we need to improve so that we can continue to offer the best training opportunities possible for you, the military connected parents that we serve. So my name is Amira Weiniger. I am a parent educator here with MSEC. Um, you will see a chat box on your screen. If you don't, please open it up. Um, you should be able to access that. And there you can ask questions and interact with us during our webinar. We have Missy Holstead, who's also a parent educator with MSEC, monitoring the chat box. So again, please feel free to utilize this feature. We'll be sharing some websites, some um, resources, all of that kind of stuff in that chat box. Um, we will have a question and answer session after the presentation today. So again, that chat box is going to be where you'll ask those questions, any questions that you may have. And we, again, will be sharing several files throughout the webinar. Please know that you can always view the recording later if you want to review the material or experience any technical difficulties during the presentation. That being said, this webinar is being recorded uh, just so that you know. So today I have the pleasure of introducing our presenters, Terry Rudy and Holly Newsom. Terry Rudy is the research project manager at the Clearinghouse for Military Family Readiness at Penn State and serves as the project manager of the Resource Center for Improving Family Health Behaviors at the Thrive Initiative, where she provides oversight of and contributes to the curriculum and content development, implementation and dissemination and evaluation of universal and secondary prevention parent education programming that focuses on child and family well-being. Holly Newsom is a research and evaluation associate with the Clearinghouse for Military Family Readiness at Penn State, the spouse of an active duty soldier and parent of four military connected children. She works to cultivate connection and wellness in the military community through involvement with local and national military spouse networks, installation support agencies, and community organizations. So with that, I will turn it over to these ladies who will be taking over the presentation. Thank you, Amira, for that introduction. And thank you, MSEC, for everything that you do for military families. Um, Holly and I are really happy to be here, excited to talk to you all today, uh, learn a little bit about each other, and share some of the resources that we have for you. For those of you, you can wait. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Clearinghouse, we are part of the Penn State University and we're an applied research center. Um, we have research faculty and staff, and we provide support mainly to professionals who are offering programming 
to, and, um, to military families. Um, we help professionals to identify, implement, evaluate, and improve programs um, so that they can strengthen military service members and their families. And sometimes we get to develop programming too. Um, so we're going to talk to you about one of the programs that we've developed today. Um, some of the projects that we work on at the Clearinghouse are across the Department of Defense. So all service branches and some are service specific. Some of the current programming that we're working on um, are spouse transition projects. We have, you know, obviously providing support to parents or new parents. We have problem sexual behavior projects, suicide and veterans initiatives. So really a whole bunch of different projects at the clearinghouse that we work on, just really depending on what our partners are looking for. So there was a question that came through the chat box asking where you all might be joining us from today. So if you haven't already, feel free to go ahead and put that into the chat. Um, I am joining you all from State College, Pennsylvania, and that is the home of Penn State University. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining from. Um, I, Holly Newsom here, and I'm joining from Clarksville, Tennessee, which is just south of Fort Campbell. Okay, um, we can click to the next slide, actually two slides, and the next one. There we go. Okay. Um, so we've got Jennifer joining us from Alexandra, Alexandria, Virginia. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for sharing. Um, so just to provide a brief background here about the Thrive Initiative, which is what we're going to talk to you about today. Um, this is being developed as a collaboration between DOD and the Clearinghouse. And the aim here with the programming is to create a series of developmentally appropriate parenting programs. And these programs are evidence informed, so they're backed by research. And we're making them affordable to military and civilian families. In fact, all of the online Thrive programming is directly available to parents and caregivers at no cost. Um, it's also, it's available to military families and also to civilian families. The Thrive programming really looks to incorporate a strengths-based approach. So we're focusing on what you or your family is already doing well and building upon that to increase your family readiness. The programs identify what we are calling common everyday moments that all parents experience and working through those scenarios and strategies to teach parents how they can strengthen those parenting skills. In all of the Thrive programs, we um, talk about positive parenting practices and we introduce those to strengthen parenting skills like teaching parents how to use positive reinforcement and skill encouragement with their children. Um, strategies are presented to teach parents how to manage stress in themselves and also their children by emphasizing the importance of helping the children regulate their own emotions and then also helping the parents regulate their emotions, right? So looking at both. And then finally, we have foundational skills for promoting healthy lifestyles. Um, things that are included are information about nutrition, physical activity, screen time, and then also media consumption. So today, um, our learning objectives and goals are for you all to be able to list at least three positive parenting skills or strategies that you can incorporate into your everyday family moments. Um, for you to be able to identify at least two Thrive resources you can use or apply in your daily family life. Um, to learn how to access the web-based Thrive Parent Education Programming. And then also to understand that parenting can be challenging and that you are not alone. Okay, before we get started, we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, in the chat, please tell us how many children you have and the ages of your children. Um, so for me, I have four children, a 17 year old, a 12 year old and twins, a boy girl twins who are 10. So I'll go ahead and share. For me, I have an eight year old son and a five year old um, daughter who is getting ready to start kindergarten. So that's very exciting for her. And I see that Jennifer has said she has two girls, seventh grade and third grade. So a 12 year old and a nine year old. Um, okay, and it looks like Harrison is joining us from Montgomery, Alabama. Welcome Harrison. And another participant with three children, 13, 11 and seven, all right. Great, thank you all for sharing. 
Um, so a little bit more about Thrive, and then we'll get into the program that you know we're we're here to talk about today. So a little bit more background here. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, with the development of Thrive, um, the DoD was really looking for a parenting program that could go across the entire child lifespan. Um, so we're looking at programming for zero to 18 year olds. And when we were when we were trying to figure out how we were going to set that up with the range of developmental differences across that whole span, there's just too much going on to put that into one comprehensive program. So what we decided to do was to break it down into four separate developmentally appropriate parent education programs. So on the screen right now, you'll see the four Thrive Universal programs that we have. And what we mean by universal is that the programs are suitable for most families, which means a majority of the families, the families are gonna benefit from the information that is contained within the programming. So the first program that we have is Take Root. That is for parents and caregivers of children zero to three. So that's that infant toddler age range. Sprout is for parents and caregivers of um, the preschool age range or who are three to five years old. Grow is for parents and caregivers of children who are five to 10 or that school age range. And then branch out for parents and caregivers of children 10 to 18 years old or the middle to high school age range, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So in order to access any of these universal parenting programs, parents can simply navigate to the Thrive website located at thrive.psu.edu and register for one of the programs. It walks you through very easily how to sign up and register. And the nice thing about the programming being online is that if you have, say, a half hour to engage with the program, you can come back at a later time and pick up where you left off. And you never lose the time. Like, you don't have, say, a week to complete the program you know you can it can be out there for as long as you need so that's the nice thing about it being in an online format so as a result of feedback we received from the field and conversations we've had with our partnered partners we've decided to start developmenting developing what we call supplemental parent education modules so you can go to the next slide please and so we started to develop these to help meet your needs as parents. So these modules are available online and they focus on identified topics to offer some additional supports to families. Um, they're really intended to complement these age appropriate Thrive programs that I just mentioned. So what that means is we recommend that a parent first take your age appropriate Thrive program for your child and then take any of the supplemental modules that might be applicable to your family situation. Each of the supplemental modules are about two hours in length. And we currently have two that are available online. We have Exceptional Families, Embracing Differences, Flourishing Together. And that module is for families with a child with a disability. And then the other one we currently have online is Grand Families, Prospering with 10 to 14 year olds. And the, those modules are primarily for grandparents who are or have become the caregivers of an adolescent, adolescent in that 10 to 14 year old age range. We are actually going to complete six more additional supplemental modules within the next year on topics like mental health, which will actually be coming soon, um, parental absence, co-parenting, technology, sibling relationships, and harmful behaviors in children and youth. So a lot of new things coming along or coming down the pipeline for Thrive. So feel free to check back to the Thrive website and see what's available um, you know, over the course of the next few months. Alrighty, next slide, please. So parenting children, especially adolescents and teens, um, can be challenging. Let's take a moment to remember that we all need to take time for ourselves as individuals and that it's okay and even necessary that we do so. So in the chat, uh, we invite you to share how you take time for yourself. Um, some of you may call this self-care. Um, for me, I like to wake up early before everyone else uh, in my house, my children, wake up so I can enjoy some coffee, take a walk with my dog, and maybe listen to a podcast. Just really get uh, myself together for the day so that I can support everyone else. Uh, looks like Jennifer likes to exercise and garden. That sounds wonderful. So for me, this is Terry. For me, I think the things, my self-care things I like to do, I'm, a, I'm an avid mountain biker and I love riding my bike and I love to be in the forest and hiking. So for me, that's really, that's really key for me to kind of maybe center myself or really something that I look forward to doing and just spending that time, you know, either with somebody else or alone by myself. 
Yeah, self-care is so important. For sure. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh, we're there. Okay. Um, all right, so we want to introduce Branch out to you. This is why you are all here today. So this is Thrive's program that is specifically for parents and caregivers of adolescents and teens that are in that 10 to 18 year old age range. So when we began building the Branch Out program, we realized that communication is such a huge piece for families with children at this age. So the Branch Out program has a core communication module that's followed by four scenario-based modules. The modules use different family scenarios and challenges as entry points to skill building discussion. And then we use those everyday challenges or those everyday moments that parents of adolescents and teens experience to really offer you all a variety of strategies in order to deal with the various situations that might come up. For example, we have several scenarios that are centered around technology, so digital device usage, social media influences, and cyberbullying. Or as another example, we have a dating violence scenario that really helps to guide parents with what they would do if they suspect their child is in an unhealthy relationship, you know, whether their child is the victim or potentially even the aggressor, and how to approach that challenge. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, um, the Thrive or the Branch Out program is self-paced, um, you know, so you can come on and take it as you have time. It takes about four hours to complete the programming in full. Okay, so today we'd like to discuss and have interaction with you, you know, so we really look forward, you know, to you guys entering things into the chat box and, and having that back and forth um, around some of the skills and strategies that are found or taught within Branch Out. First, we want to introduce you to the program through a video. This is what we call our whiteboard animations for our programming, which is basically an introduction into the program. And as you're watching the video, we really want you to think about what stands out for you or why you are participating in today's webinar. It could be something you want to learn more about, something you want to do differently, a challenge you have, or a different way to approach interacting with your child, anything really. Um, and then we're going to ask you to share your thoughts after the video. Welcome to Branch Out, a parenting program for parents and caregivers of children ages 10 to 18 years old. Branch Out is designed to help you navigate through the unique challenges you may face as you parent your adolescent child. Branch Out is a convenient online program that will build upon skills you already have to achieve a healthy and resilient lifestyle for your family. This program focuses on three important areas of parenting. Positive parenting, stress management for you and your child, and promoting child physical health. With Branch Out, you'll be joining us on a journey. That journey will teach you how to communicate effectively with your child, help you understand adolescent development, and expose you to strategies that you can use in common everyday moments. Branch Out can help you connect with your child and give your child the confidence they need to soar. In Branch Out, you will complete a main communication session that will be followed by developmentally appropriate scenarios from four adolescent everyday moments. These individual scenarios will help you understand everyday moments from your child's perspective and teach you strategies that will propel you both through each day together. Branch Out can help you climb to new heights in your relationship with your child. During adolescence, many changes occur in your child and in your relationship with your child. Understanding and having the parenting skills to apply in a variety of complex situations can make dealing with the challenges of parenting an adolescent a lot smoother so you can relax and enjoy the ride. Clear communication with your child is vital. Learning how to manage your own behaviors when interacting with your child will help make communicating much easier. By working alongside each other to develop values and goals for your entire family, everyone gets to be an essential part of the crew. Each session contains interactive activities that focus on practice. These will help you spread your wings and let your family fly. React 
asks you to think critically about the skills that you were taught. Interact directs you to practice these skills in your everyday moments with your family. Reflect asks you to think about skills you have learned in the sessions and offers different responses you can use in certain situations. Remember, practicing can give you confidence in your parenting and practicing the skills you have learned in Branch Out will help your family thrive. By working together as a team, you and your child can create a successful and thriving family and you can feel good about fulfilling your parenting mission. Roger that. If you have any questions, please email us at thrive at psu .edu. Okay, so we want to hear from you all. What thoughts did you have about parenting or what you might want to gain from participation in a parenting program as you were watching the video? Terry, you know, when I came on board uh, with the Clearinghouse, the branch out programming was already developed. And so I was seeing this kind of uh, with fresh eyes through the lens of a parent. And uh, the aspect of branch out that I really appreciate the most is that it builds off of things that you're already doing well as a parent, that strengths-based approach. Um, it, it gave me a boost of confidence in those areas and, and also encouragement to try out new strategies or approaches in areas that I would like to strengthen or, or maybe improve. Um, this video mentioned that the scenarios that highlight the common issues or challenges that, that you may face in, in everyday life. Uh, I, was, I was really surprised to see how realistic the issues and scenarios were. Uh, drug use, online safety, uh, mental health, uh, there's also a whole session about sex and relationships that's addressed in Branch Out. So it really, uh, it really addresses those um, important things that adolescents are experiencing and gives parents um, some strategies to, to help uh, everyone get through this time period together. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Holly. And, you know, I appreciate that you said about the real scenarios. It's it's interesting as we're building these programs, you know, all the, the team has a lot of children different ages. So I feel like we can always pull somebody in and be like, what's going on? Or what are the challenges that either are happening in your family or happening um, in families that you know, just because you're living in kind of that age range. So thank you for sharing. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. Actually, I think two slides. Yep, one more. Thank you. So as we mentioned earlier, communication really is the foundation of the Branch Out program. You know, research has shown that adolescents who feel like they can openly communicate with their parents and that they're feeling heard are less likely to engage in risky behaviors like drinking or unprotected sex. Um, and they're also less likely to experience dating violence. So in Branch Out, we outline several strategies that can help families create an environment that really does promote that trust and communication, like how you can limit distractions and be present when you're talking with your child, setting expectations around communication, or even developing ways for your child to have a voice. Uh, Terry, one strategy that I like to use is, is the daily check-in. My children love one-on-one -on -one time and uh, that individual, individualized attention. Uh, so the check-in looks a little bit different for each child. My high schooler gets her check-in time after school. Uh, she's always been really open about all aspects of her life and is really easy to talk with. So uh, the check-ins are, are super easy with her. Um, my twins get their check-in time individually at bedtime and uh, they really like that settling down and, and chatting time. Um, we're really busy in the morning, so checking in in the morning for them is, is almost impossible. And we have homework going on after school, so those meaningful um, conversations happen before bed. Now, my middle schooler, which maybe some of uh, our participants or other parents can uh, uh, feel this also, uh, she's the challenging one. She doesn't like to open up as much. It's harder um, to communicate, so our check-ins are uh, most successful either after school while she's baking. So she loves to bake and um, while she's working on something else, it's easy for her to kind of open up or in the car and during rides to and from practice, she's a soccer player. And so um, just sitting alongside each other, it's, it's easy, easier for, for her to share um, uh, with me. So 
that's really helpful. I see there was a yeah. question about um, this, the scenarios being specific for military children. Can you, can you weigh in a little bit more about that? Terry. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of the scenarios within Branch Out really talk about those everyday moments that parents, whether you are a military parent or family or whether you're a civilian family, that there is some on some level you can probably, you know, relate to or could potentially occur. So there are some things to branch out that are military specific, but they're also pretty wide, pretty open, because whether you're a military family or a civilian family, you're going to experience a lot of these, the same challenges, you know, in terms of when your child hits this middle school or high school range, you know, a lot of the things are very similar across the board too. And of course, I think remembering that we can't include everything in one program for sure. You know, so you might not be able to get everything you need or you're looking for out of the program, but definitely things for you to build on or take back um, to implement within your family. So Holly, I want to go back to you mentioning the check-in about how that's something that you use and that works well for you. Yeah, it's such a huge point piece, even though it's a tiny little thing that you could do to really start to kind of build that communication and that connection with your child and doing it individually, you know, with you having four children who are all in this branch out age range, you know, setting up even those few minutes for you to connect with each of them individually, I think is so important. So some of the other ways that you can promote trust and communication with your adolescent or your teen are through planning family activities. So remembering to take that time together to plan and have fun. Um, also, we talk a lot about active listening and branch out and within our other programming too. you know, to really limit your distractions, put down your cell phone and take a break from your household responsibilities and really give your child your undivided attention so that you can build on those communication skills and, and that connection. And then also by establishing boundaries, you know, make sure your child knows what's expected of them and remain consistent, remain firm. Um, also model the behavior you want to see, right? Make sure you're, you're exhibiting the same things that you're asking for from your child. And a final way to promote trust and communication is by using what we call I statements. So the listener knows how you feel and that you are actually conveying those emotions without them feeling judged. So for example, instead of saying something like, you never text me back when you say you will, you know, you could try saying, I feel scared when you don't text me back when you say you will, so that they can really hear the emotion behind the words. And this is, I statements aren't just something that you could use with middle schoolers or high schoolers. I use this a lot with my eight-year-old son. And it helps me to, to really can, you know, kind of convey to him what, how I feel when he does something a certain way or doesn't do something a certain way. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So clarifying or using clear, concise language um, helps you when you're communicating with your child. There's actually a great activity in the branch out module that talks about intention versus impact. So intention, what you're trying to communicate versus impact, what the other person hears. And I think this is really critical for parents to understand, you know, that their child may not hear what they mean or think they're telling them because their child naturally sees things through a different lens. So I have an example and I'm gonna ask Holly to help me here. So, okay, Holly, I'm gonna read a sentence and I want you to tell me what you think the parent is trying to convey to the child. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. Remember, you need to have everything read by Monday for your test. Uh, so the parent here wants the child to be prepared for their test on Monday. Right, sure. The parent might be communicating that they want their child to be ready, they want them to be prepared, because they want them to do well on their exam. They want them to succeed. So I'm going to read the sentence again, and I want you to tell me what you think a teenager might have heard. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Remember, you need to have everything read by Monday for your test. All right, I've been here. Uh, the child might think that the parent is nagging or telling them that they can't do anything right. <laughs> exactly. The child might be thinking, I know. Why does she always need to remind me? She thinks I can't do anything on my own or I can't do anything right. Yeah. So it's important to remember we all have different perspectives and there's times where those perspectives may not line up. So Holly, I'm going to ask you, how do you think a parent might say it better to try to ensure that that intention 
is really matching or more closely mirroring the impact. Okay, um, maybe the parent could say, uh, tell me about what you need to do to prepare for your test on Monday. Right, that's perfect. You know, simple ways of making changes to how we say something really can have a big impact and may even engage your child in additional communication or interaction. So, you know, make those, those simple little tweaks to the way that you're asking or saying something to your child really can have a huge impact. We can go to the next slide. So we also mentioned earlier that I statements are a great way to start a conversation, you know, in a positive manner and really help you again to make sure that impact is aligning with the intention. So we're going to practice using I statements now and Holly's going to read a, a statement a parent might make and then ask you all to type in the chat box how a parent might say it better by actually using that I statement. All right, so remember the I statements promote trust and communication. And by using that I statement, the listener knows how you feel and you can convey those emotions without the listener feeling judged. And uh, we have a formula up here on the screen uh, to help you uh, reformulate and say it better. So here's, let's try this sentence. Your room is such a mess. Why can't you clean up after yourself? So here the listener likely feels judged. Um, you haven't expressed how you're feeling. How, how can you say it better? Terry, you're welcome to help help us out too. Yeah, I can tackle this this first one here. Um, okay, so let's see. Your room is such a mess, right? And then what was the second part, Holly? Uh, why can't you clean up after yourself? Okay, so yeah, turning this into an I statement, really putting that emotion in there so they know. And this is something, like I said, I'm practicing with my child. So I've had a lot of practice with these I statements lately. So maybe something like, I feel disappointed to see your new clothes on the floor. Um, and then maybe something like money's tight right now. And I wanna make sure we make the most of what we can buy. Um, and then that requested behavior, what you're really looking for, you know, can I get your help to make sure your clothes are staying, you know, in good condition, you know, so that we can, you can have them for a while by putting them away in your closet. So taking kind of that formula and putting those pieces, pieces in there. How'd I do? You did great. You did great. Right. Okay. Let's do another one and um, feel free to, to help us out with the next one too. Okay. Hurry up. We are always waiting on you to get out the door. Gosh, kids at this, families at this stage and the branch out stage are so busy. I, I, I've felt myself saying something like this before. So how, Terry, how can I say it better? Yeah, I'm going to, before I answer that, so I'm going to give people in the chat here a little more time because that's, this is a long thing to type, but I'm going to read Harrison's from the previous lunch. It says, I feel anxious when your room isn't clean. What can I do to help you with organizing your room? So that's perfect. That's kind of, you know, offering this, I'm here for you. Is there something you need from me to help you make sure you do what you need to do, you know, so that we're all on the same page? Um, so yeah, getting up to getting back to your hurry up. We're always waiting on you to get out the door. Um, probably something like, you know, I feel frustrated when we're running behind schedule. You know, I worry if you're late to school, you're going to miss something. You know, what can we do? What can we do? Kind of what Harrison did here is ask a question. What can we do together to make our morning run more smooth, smoothly so that we can get out the door, you know, on time? That one sounds great. I saw Jennifer had, she had a great um, I statement for the, the first question as well. She said, I feel disrespected when I ask you to clean your room and it doesn't get done. I want to help you keep your room clean so we can have more time to do fun things. Any, any suggestions for, for this one, getting that, getting that child to uh, get out the door on time in the morning? We can, we have one, one more that, that we'll try on you too. We can move on to that next one. Okay. While you're thinking of that one, um, Terry, help me with this. Um, okay. Oh gosh. How many times do I need to remind you to do your homework? 
Uh, yes, yes. I feel like this is probably a common one for all of you parents with children in this <laughs> age range here. Um, so maybe something like, let's do an emotion. So I feel worried. You know, I feel worried about your commitment to getting your homework done on your own. Um, you know, if your grades suffer, you might have to do summer school. You know, what can I help? What can I do to help you get started on your homework without having to do these reminders? So maybe something like that. I see Jennifer has some in the chat. You're always, yeah, being on time. So this is going back to the time one, our previous one. So she has being on time shows you value and respect the time of others. Let's start setting an alarm 15 minutes before we go and have a checklist you can run through to make sure we're on time from now on. I think that's good. I think remember to include that, that piece that shows how do you feel as the parent? How does that impact you? You know, like, why is it important? Or why do you want your child to know it's important to you? Because how does that make you feel? You know, like, I think you could maybe just say, I feel disrespected, you know, or I feel like you don't respect everybody else's time, something like that. I mean, I think it's great. But I think making sure that you put your own piece in there. And don't forget that I part. Yeah, and an alarm is a great idea. I use lots of alarms to help me and my children get to where we need to be or keep us all on track. So thanks yeah. for having that in a sec. Yeah, that's great, thank you. We can go on to the next slide. So we all know that one of the most significant milestones that all adolescents experience is puberty. And Branch Out, like all the other Thrive programming, discusses developmental milestones and those emotional and physical changes. You know, at this at this age, adoles adolescents are experiencing multiple emotional changes, you know, as they developed. And these can include things like aggression, cognitive changes, depression, low self-esteem, or maybe even mood swings. And this program reinforces that every child is unique and they're gonna develop in their own timeline. In fact, some of these changes can take some children up to four years to complete. So it's really important for you as a parent to understand that your, your child's mental health needs, um, you know, what they are and be able to recognize when your child may need some, some outside support. So in Branch Out, you know, we talk about all of these changes. There's a section devoted or a module devoted specifically um, just to these changes that might be happening. Yes, Terry, you know, uh, my ranch child children, they're very aware of their own development and then also the growth and development um, in other children. Um, mine are all athletes and size does seem to have its advantages. My, my daughters are all um, tend to be earlier bloomers and uh, sports have, have really helped them to feel kind of le less self-conscious about that. Um, but my son, however, um, is more typical typical for his age uh, in his physical development. And he's, he's many inches shorter uh, than his twin sister. Um, and that's been uh, kind of a challenge um, for him to outsiders. He looks like he's the little brother. So uh, we've had many discussions about how everyone grows at their own timeline. Um, and uh, needless to say, he, he's really looking forward to puberty. Um, emotionally, that's, that's a lot of, uh, development and, and changes and uh, emotions are happening during this time. Um, and my family's experiencing everything right now. We're happy one moment, sad the next. Um, my husband PCS ahead of us. So there are many feelings about him, A, not being there with us, and then B, um, the likelihood of our family moving next summer. So um, our family situation has sparked an array of emotions in, um, in, my, in my children. Um, they're sad about leaving friends, excited about possibly being together again next, next year. And then um, they're worrying about making new friends. So we're kind of navigating all of these things all at once while, um, you know, we're getting through our, our everyday uh, schedule and, and things that we, we have going on. All right. We can go to the next slide. Uh, let's hear from all of you. What are some ways that you either do or can help your child feel happy and positive about themselves? You know, there's all, the, all of these changes going on, mixed emotions about um, how they're changing or how they're feeling. Uh, what are some things uh, that have worked for, for you as a parent with your child um, to help them feel, feel good 
bit about themselves. And you can put those in chat. Oh, your girl. Okay, Jennifer shared that she lets her girls express themselves through their hair. So I'm, I'm curious what that means. Oh, okay. One has pink, the other has purple right now. Yeah, I mean, that's something, there, there are things that, uh, that we want to control as parents and, and, uh, and values that we have. And that's something that you've given, uh, allowed your, your child to have that independence and freedom about. Um, how about showing love and affection to your child? Spending that undistracted or focused time uh, with your child, being interested in what's happening in their life. And uh, those daily check-ins are great times that you can uh, really build that, that positive um, interaction and helping them feel great. Yeah, Jennifer, that family game nights, those are, those are a, a great way to do something fun together, um, laugh, those uh, nutritious foods, that's a way you can um, show love to your child. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit more about family connectedness and that kind of that family game that kind of leads us into here. Yeah, some of these ways that you all are talking about right now, you know, as ways you can encourage and support, support your child, those things can also create that family cohesiveness, you know, or the sense of feeling loved and, and belonging within the family. So you can continue to provide that supportive environment by doing things like we talked about, spending time together or planning those family activities and getting active and having fun or even working on projects together. And, you know, don't forget to include neighbors, other family, other friends in to join, you know, to join in the fun too. For my family, my husband is out of town every other week for work. And so my son and my husband have found, you know, ways to play online games together, you know, even if it's just one time that they do it during that whole week, just to kind of maintain that connection. And it feels special to both of them because it's something special that they both get to do, um, you know, even though my husband's not physically present. So thinking kind of outside the box sometimes to kind of do some of those things, um, you know, those different things to keep that cohesiveness and that connection. Yeah, I see a uh, participant in the chat shared uh, that they like to do walks and hikes together. Um, and another, uh, Chris said, constantly talking with her girls, asking them how they're doing and reassuring how wonderful they are. I bet, I bet they love that. Um, for my family, our family bond's really important to us. We try to do something together every weekend, um, kicking soccer balls or watching a movie together. Uh, dinner time is a great way for us to, to get that, that family time, um, sitting together with no TV, no phones, and just talking and eating and enjoying each other's company. Um, in the branch out training, you are introduced to an initiative called 5210. Uh, that stands for five fruits or vegetables each day, two hours or less of daily screen time, one hour of physical tip activity, and zero sweetened beverages. Um, there's a calendar available that encourages you to track each of these healthy behaviors each day. And uh, this summer, my, we, my family, we printed this out and challenged ourselves to a week of healthy behaviors. Um, for that week, we were very intentional about our food and drink choices and our uh, physical activity. And we were, we were pretty successful in rising to the challenge. Uh, we should probably do another one, but that got us um, connected. And I, I think a link to that is shared in the chat as well. If you're interested in and get and seeing that calendar and um, challenging your own family. That's great, Ollie. Thank you for sharing that. That calendar is one of my favorite activities that there is for, for 5210. So thank you for that. Um, another way, you know, that you can support, you know, provide a supportive environment is to is to establish routine of holding family meetings. We talk a lot, a lot about family meetings and branch out and how important that is. You know, they're really a safe way for your children to be able to discuss topics and concerns openly with you all. You know, and they also offer opportunities for you as parents to learn more about what your child's needs are, what their desires are, what they're thinking and feeling. You know, and as they continue to grow and change, your family dynamics also need to change and involve, you know, kind of evolve as well. So having a safe place where you can discuss these challenges, these changing, you know, needs, whether it's of your child or of the family, it's really a solid way to kind of keep growing and learning together as a family. So we want to know from you all, does anyone currently hold 
regular family meetings? And if so, how do they work, work for you? And if not, how do you think maybe your family might benefit from holding a family meeting, you know, whether you schedule a monthly family meeting to do, um, you know, to sit down and get everybody together? Does anybody currently do family meetings? Holly, what about your family? Do you all hold regular family meetings? We, we do. So this was something I, I had read about prior to the branch out training. And then uh, when I went through the training, I was reminded of, of the benefits that family meetings um, can have on your family. So we, we started um, incorporating them more regularly. So for us, they, uh, we do them on Sunday after dinner. Uh, when well, we're usually still kind of all sitting at the dinner table. Um, we talk about the week ahead, what we have planned, uh, what we might want to do, um, suggestions for what to have for dinner that week, you know, just kind of a great uh, time for us to maybe reflect about the week prior and then talk about um, what we have coming up for the following week. Or if there's kind of a, a big family discussion or decision that needs to be made, that's a, a great time for us to talk through that. Um, now that my husband is in another state, uh, we FaceTime him in for these meetings. And so um, it's, it's a great way for him to share about what he has going on. Um, he shared a lot about the local community. So that's kind of gotten us excited for what's to come um, when we visit or for when we eventually move there. Um, for example, there was, he's at West Point. So there was a march back um, this week for cadets and, and he went to a family event uh, where all, all the People in his department were there with their families and the cadets came marching back from a six week field exercise. And so uh, we're excited that we get to be a part of that next year. Um, it looks like Jennifer says that, that their family does not, but they definitely should. So I encourage you to, to check out the branch out training. There's a, a lot of information about family meetings and how you can organize that uh, for your family. And, and really, you know, a framework is helpful, but um, just that, that time to check in and, and um, gather as a family is really beneficial. And it can look a lot of different ways, um, depending on what works best from your family. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for sharing, Holly and, and everyone in the chat. Thank you. Um, so creating that family cohesiveness, cohesiveness and spending that time together um, where you engage in positive communication really promotes kind of an emotionally healthy parent-child attachment, right? Um, and models good behaviors for your child as they begin to form those deeper friendships and those romantic relationships. Um, there's many ways parents can guide their teens as they begin to seek out relationships and in particular, you know, romantic relationships. So on the screen, we have some guidelines here, um, you know, for how you can guide your teen as they seek out those relationships. And Holly, I'm just going to turn to you right now to ask you what that looks like for you and your family now that all your children are in this branch out age range and probably developing a lot of those relationships outside of your immediate family. Yeah, so you know this this time, uh, friends are such a larger part of their life, and and our family now, the friends spending the night, getting rides to and from practice, um, kid, different kids coming over to work on projects. There's a lot of opportunities for us to talk about how to treat others, um, talk about how others are treating us, and how we want to be treated. Um, then there are the romantic relationships. So. Um, there's a lot of TV shows and movies that are centered around couples who date, want to date, break up, get married, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there, um, there are a lot of models and a lot of ways that we can talk about this, either from what um, is happening in our own lives or also um, what's happening, what we're seeing on TV or what's even happening in our friends or in um, family members. Um, dating is something that we've started exploring with our oldest. Um, you know, kids start to go to dances when they're in high school. Um, dating can look a lot of different ways. So I think I'm um, asking your children, like, well, what does it mean that you're dating? What is, you know, what exactly for, for younger kids, it just means, Hey, I like this person for older um, children. It may mean that they want to spend some time together. And, you know, there's a lot of things I'm learning too. Um, there was no Snapchat when I was a teen, and that seems to be a place where um, a lot of relationships are kind of um, kindled and, and uh, maintained. This is a heavy topic. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, we're, I, I'm checking the clock, and it looks like we're running kind of close to our time, so we're going to skip over the next slide. 
and go on to the school related slide. Yeah. So in addition to navigating these relationships at this age, you know, adolescents, they need to be able to start managing their own time with involvement in extracurricular activities, you know, with schoolwork, sports, whatever, everything that's going on. So something that we talk about in Branch Out is helping your teens to complete their homework. You know, it can be challenging at times, but there are ways that you can help your child, you know, establishing a homework routine, you know, like it's got to get completed as soon as your child gets home from school or it happens immediately after dinner or sports practice and making sure that you identify, you know, kind of a quiet place that's free from distractions like televisions or other screens where they can really complete their work and make sure they have the necessary materials they need to, to get it completed. And also, you know, remember to remain in close contact with the school via any websites or social media sites so that you know what's going on, what's happening. So some information about school-related, homework-related stuff there. I'm going to skip over the next slide also and go on to the digital media participation slide because this is a huge part of Branch Out and potentially a concern that you all have because technology is such a huge part of our daily lives and we have to be able to help our children have a healthy relationship with the digital world. In Branch Out, we've got several examples and scenarios that include either a technology or a digital media component. Um, there's many benefits, right, to digital media participation, such as peer engagement, exposure to new ideas or knowledge, or even aspirational or career engagement. But there's also risks. We also have some potential risks that could happen, like isolation, exposure to inappropriate content, cyberbullying, or even sleep disturbances. So as a parent, you want to make sure you help enhance those benefits of participation in digital media, you know, and then minimize those risks. And some ways that you can do that are setting those screen time limits and making sure that those don't interfere with healthy habits. So make sure your child gets adequate amounts of physical activity and that they're also eating healthy meals and monitor or pay attention to how your child is interacting with technology and make sure your child understands those risks that are associated with maybe sharing their potential you know, their personal information on the internet. What are the risks there? What should you and should you not share? And then finally, setting up a media plan. So this is something that is found within the program and, you know, that you can develop. And it's a way for all family members to know what's expected of them. For example, establishing a rule that no devices are allowed at the dinner table or they all must be on the charger in the kitchen by 9 p.m., um, within the program, you actually can walk through and develop your plan and then print it out in the end to share with your entire family. Or you can let your children be part of that process and put the plan together with them. You know, let them help establish what those rules are, what you all are going to do as a family. And then making sure that you're also monitoring uh, or also modeling you know, your behaviors. So, you know, what you're expecting of them is something that um, you are also doing as well. So next slide, please. All right, so rules and expectations for uh, digital devices are is really important. I have two with cell phones. We don't use them at the dinner table. Um, my 12 year old has to get our permission to download apps. Um, what kind of rules has your family established around digital device usage? Uh, video games are, are I feel like every, every kid plays video games. These, I know my son loves them. Um, he checks his game device out when he wants to play it. Um, without those limits, I think he would play 24 um, <laughs> seven. I'm not entirely sure who's playing with. So he plays uh, without headphones so I can hear what's being said while he plays. And, and uh, Terry had mentioned sharing personal information. Um, we've talked about that many times, because again, you know. With these online game systems, you don't always know um, who's on there. There is some risk with that. Um, Jennifer says that she sets screen time hours for use with her iPads. They don't have phone yet, phones yet. Jennifer, I, I envy you without the phones. There's a lot of monitoring that goes in. And I, I feel like they're, they start asking for phones um, at an early age. It, it really takes some willpower to, to hold off before you allow personal cell phones. Any others? 
Okay, we can probably go to the next slide. So, um, you know, it, it can be challenging, you know, like Holly just mentioned to ensure your child's safety when it comes to digital, digital media, you know, it's hard to know really what's going on. Um, so we have a in branch out a downloadable, you know, downloadable toolkit resources that can help you with some of these challenges that you might have. For example, there's a resource that contains tips for online safety at home. So ensuring that all your devices are protected and, you know, making sure you have those passwords set and that they're private. Um, so making sure you watch out for those potential risks, you know, watch for whether your child may be being bullied through technology or even be the bully, you know, be the one who's bullying other children. Because as a parent, you could be on either side of the spectrum, you know, your child engaging in digital media, they're, you know, they're kind of at risk too to be pressured into making bad decisions. So really making sure, you know, you're monitoring um, the usage that your child has. Um, Branch Out does a nice job at going through a lot of different challenges. We've got social media influencers. We have peer pressure to send sex messages. We've got the cyberbullying. You know, so a lot of different potential scenarios um, to walk you through that and the, the challenges that families experience and how you could address um, those things. So we're going to move on to the next slide here. So we want to do a quick activity to really reinforce the importance of digital media safety and monitoring your child's technology use. So Holly is going to share some acronyms or some teen codes with you. And we want to see um, how well you do. How well do you know your acronyms? Okay, I'll start with an easy one. L LOL, what does LOL stand for? Oh. You can put that in the chat. That, that one's laughing out loud. I think <laughs> PM. So I know this one is private message. ILY. I, I've seen this one in my in my children's messages to, to friends. It means I love you. Uh, DYK. Another one you may see. That one means stands for did you know? All right, Terry, you want to do the you want to share some kind of scarier ones? Sure. Yeah. So this is really where we're trying to kind of reinforce that monitoring of your child's use, right? Because there, there are some scary things. So we have this one, this one isn't so PTB. Anybody know what PTB stands for? That one is please text back. So let's get into some some of those scary ones. Um, KYS. Does anybody know what KYS stands for? So that one is actually kill yourself. So when we talk about monitoring, you know, we talk about potentially setting up a time where you know you tell your child, hey, if you're going to have a cell phone, then I'm going to monitor it every week or you know, whatever it is, once a month, we're going to do this. So we're going to sit down and we're going to look at it together because potentially things like this are coming through when your child is talking with people um, who you may not know, or even talking to their friends and stuff, you know, are they bullying? Are they saying these things to other people or are they being bullied? Is somebody saying things like this to them? So really just kind of reinforcing that safety piece and making sure you kind of know what's going on as a parent. So we can go to the next slide here. So just as a reminder, Branch Out and the Thrive programming is available on the Thrive website at thrive.psu.edu. And again, at no cost to military and civilian families. And like we mentioned earlier today, we've only highlighted a small portion of the topics and strategies that really are presented in the programming. Um, so we encourage you to register and continue to build on the strengths you have as a parent. Um, so we want to ask you all one more question before we kind of go into a Q&A and you guys can ask us questions. Um, based on what we've discussed today, what's one strategy that you heard that you want to either continue doing um, or that you want to start to do with your family? You know, one for me, even though my children are not in this age range yet, is that family meeting. And it's interesting because yesterday my son actually told me that in his, his camp that he's in, they did like a camp meeting like himself and two other two other children to figure out how to 
kind of strategize how to deal with a child who wasn't acting appropriately. So to me, I was like, oh my gosh, they did a little family meeting in their, in their little clamp, camp to try to figure out how to, how to approach this other child who wasn't being very nice at the time. So that's something for me. Um, does anybody else have an example or a strategy or skill that they wanna start doing or that they're doing and that they like doing that works well for them? Terry, we mentioned that 5-2-0 calendar challenge. I'm, I'm going to get that back out. Uh, now that school's back in, schedules get hectic, uh, we still need to make sure that we're practicing healthy behaviors. I think that calendar um, can keep my family in line. We will do a friendly competition. Yeah, that's great. That's one of, that is one of my favorites. Okay, so I think that's it for us. Do you all have any questions for us? All right, so now is um, while you all are thinking of your questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to uh, run through some quick IMSEC resources that we wanna share with you, make sure you have access to, and then we'll come back to those questions um, once I run through this. So this is the time, think of them, put them in that chat box, and then we will, um, we will get to those. Um, so we would like to thank you all for joining this webinar today. And while you're thinking of those questions, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that survey I mentioned in the beginning. You can take our survey by clicking on the survey link in your chat box. It's just going to take a few minutes. Again, we really appreciate that feedback. Uh, the survey, once you're at the survey, I'll ask you for a code, click on webinar survey, and then type in 5622. And then of course, be sure to hit, hit submit at the end of that survey. Um, don't feel like you have to fill it out right now, especially as you're getting those questions in there. But if you don't fill it out now, um, you will get an email and that will have your invitation to take the survey on it as well. So if you did miss one of our previous webinars, or especially if you'd like to share this particular webinar, I know there's so many great resources being shared. The recordings can be found on our website, uh, military, www.militarychild.org under programs, training and trainings and initiatives. It's easy to just click on that link that's in the chat box. We would also like to invite you to take part in our many online professional development opportunities. Check out our website for more information. And in the meantime, please also follow us on our social media platforms. Check out SchoolQuest if you have not already. It is an online interactive tool specifically designed to support highly mobile military families and students. It has many resources and tips to help students achieve academic success and well being. Sign up today. It is Free. If you have any questions, concerns, or educational related issues for your military connected children, our military student consultants or MSCs are the premier source to help you with those questions. To contact a military student consultant, email msc at militarychild.org or call that number that is on your screen. If you are interested in getting a certificate of completion for this uh, webinar, please complete the online survey. And if you would like to receive a webinar survey for a recorded webinar, please contact Callie Abernathy. Her email address is on the screen and in the chat box. We do have some upcoming webinars tomorrow. Um, we have That is So Unfair, Tips for Communicating with Mill Teens, which I think would, um, would converge nicely with what some of the things that we've talked about today. And the next Tuesday, August 16th, we have Keys to Academic Success for Military Families. As a reminder, all of our webinars start at noon Eastern time. Um, we want to again say thank you to the Navy and Child Youth Programs for making today's workshop possible and to Terry and Holly for taking the time to share all this information with us. So now I'm gonna go back to the chat box so that we can start um, answering some of those questions. Again, we really appreciate all of your guys' participation and input. Um, so I do have a question here as how can I help my child to make good decisions and to build their autonomy? All right, that, that's the autonomy is that independence or that freedom. Um, so your adolescents becoming their own person and there are really several ways that you can foster a, a positive autonomy. To build on a values-based autonomy, continue to demonstrate love and compassion for your teen, um, but also remain firm and, and consistent with your discipline. 
have your teenager explain their thinking behind their choices or opinions to understand where they're coming from. You can show appreciation uh, when they're doing well. Um, to build on that behavioral autonomy, you'll want to allow your adolescent to be part of family decision-making processes like uh, rulemaking. Um, an example would be uh, your child can have a say in their bedtime as long as they're getting enough sleep and um, are up and completing their routine on time in the morning. You might want to have them develop their own weekly schedule and share that with you. Um, that would possibly include uh, figuring out what they're gonna do for carpool too, if they have a lot of activities they'd like to get to. Um, your child could also develop the agenda for a family meeting and take on that responsibility for the entire family. So lots of ways to, to build that independence um, in your child, that autonomy. Awesome. Yeah. And I love that about the family meeting because I feel like that would be such a great place to even bring in this rulemaking and help help them kind of assert their autonomy in that family meeting because it's kind of that safe space to do that. So I, I think that that's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so another question all my 15 year old son wants to do is play video games with his friends. How do we get him to be an active part of the family? That's a good question. So first, developing a family media plan, right? We talked about that earlier. That's a good way for you to set boundaries. So everyone knows the rules and expectations around digital devices or, you know, digital media use in the home. So you can put the plan together with the help of your child. That way, you know, like you just mentioned, Amira, they have, they have a voice and they have choices too in the matter. So some examples of rules around gaming could maybe include setting a time limit per day or per week, you know, and maybe even a time of the day for that gaming to occur. Like it only happens after dinner or after your schoolwork is finished. Also going back to those family meetings, you know, use those as time to plan things, um, you know, plan, plan what this looks like for you. And also to plan additional things like the weekly or monthly family activities, right? So that you're all doing things where you're being an active family and you're asking for their input. You know, it allows your child to be part of the decision making process and even to help organize and maybe build his excitement to participate in a, in a family activity. Awesome. Great. So then another question that we have is something that I think a lot of parents think about, they worry about, but may be uncomfortable, even though they know that they need to have these discussions. So the question is, my child just started dating. What should I say to them about sex, pregnancy, and STDs? Oh gosh, yeah, this is a really tough topic and um, Branch Out really covers a lot of strategies. So I, I recommend um, participants and listeners to check that out. Um, so having several open and honest discussions about sex and the associated risk with your child are important. Um, in fact, research indicates that these open discussions really do uh, make a difference. You'll want to find uh, an appropriate time to have these discussions and, and have them regularly. Um, you can talk about it during uh, kind of so those things, those conversations that you're just having um, throughout the day or those everyday moments. For example, um, when you and your partner show affection towards one another, you can highlight how you use appropriate boundaries. So maybe, you know, you're not, um, maybe things that you're doing in public versus what you would do um, in your home. Um, also make sure that you ask your child what they want to know. So don't be afraid to educate them. Uh, a lot of information out there and you want to be sure that they are getting their information from uh, credible sources. You could even create a toolkit with these credible resources for you and your child to reference. And um, as I mentioned, Branch Out suggests uh, many ways for you to get started. Great. I know that that would be so helpful for so many parents, especially since, you know, we do kind of get uncomfortable talking about some of those topics. Um, and some of our topics are ones that are a little bit more common that we hear, but we have a hard time answering. Um, example, my 10 year old daughter wants a cell phone and tells me that all her friends, they already have a phone. She's the only one without. Um, I don't know that I, as a parent would be ready for her to have one. But should I just get her a cell phone? Does everyone have one at this age? What, what should I do? 
Yeah, this is a tricky one. And I'm I'm already not looking forward to this one, I think, for, for me. But, you know, every family is going to have their own needs, right? And I think we need to remember that no choice is right or wrong. You need to do what's right for your family. You know, there could be some families who have multiple children that are being carpooled to different events by other parents, other individuals, and it might allow them you know, a sense of security to have their child have a cell phone, you know, and to get that early on or at a younger age so that they can check in on them. But, you know, I think one thing to remember is that this decision comes with a huge responsibility, right? Most cell phones now are smartphones. So it allows the child to do a lot more than just call or text someone. So when deciding, you really need to think about the added burden that it's gonna put on you or your family to monitor your child's usage and the rules you wanna establish around their use, you know, having a plan put together. And you can always defer to that family media plan that we've talked about to manage those rules and expectations around cell phone use. And those things can change over time. You know, as your child ages, you can update that plan and, and kind of change what the expectations are. Okay, great. Yeah. I think that you guys have talked so much about um, all of these communication tips and how the family meetings and the family media plans and having all of these established boundaries can be really helpful to our kids. But some adolescents become really frustrated and frustrated really easy when trying to communicate. What would you recommend that could be helpful in this situation? Oh, communication uh, is so important. Uh, there are really several ways that parents can support communication with their child. Um, actively listening is a great communication strategy for uh, parents to practice. By actively listening, parents make a clear effort to be present and in the moment with their child. So you want to remove distractions like turning off uh, the television or, or putting your cell phone down and, and really be in the moment. Um, asking clarifying questions, so uh, naming feelings and then summarizing uh, what you're hearing. So you can say, I, I heard you say, or it sounds like you're feeling, uh, showing your them and that they have your full and undivided attention uh, can help them feel less frustrated when they're trying to communicate with you. And it, it really reinforces that you're willing um, to, to listen to them. Awesome. Okay. So we're being mindful of everyone's time, we're going we're gonna to have one more question. Um, and we want to thank you again for both of you taking your time to be here with us today, but with so many influences on our children, social media, just media in general apps, their friends, how do I ensure that my child has a positive self-image or a positive outlook on life? Oh, sure. You know, really the best way for you to know about your child is to spend time with them. You know, use those family meetings to plan time together, like activities or vacations that really allow you the time to communicate openly and honestly with each other. And also plan for one-on-one -on -one time with each of your children, right? Plan for a spa day or take them to their favorite restaurant or just plan time you know, for you to regularly hang out, like you guys are going to do Friday night walks, just the two of you, that kind of thing, you know, and also be sure to use those daily check-ins that we talked about um, to kind of keep your finger on the pulse of those everyday activities. But you can also then use that to gauge if there's any sudden changes or differences that kind of come up. You know, for example, if your child's spending every Tuesday after school with their friends doing a club or some type of activity, and that all of a sudden stops abruptly, you're going to want to find out why, you know, with those daily check-ins and that interaction, you're going to know that's happened. And, you know, you'll be able to talk to your child about why there was such a sudden change or an unexpected change. And if that's something that, you know, is potentially concerning. Great. Again, we are out of time. I feel like we could ask you all so many more questions about all of these things, but this is a great way to remind everybody to go and check out um, all of the programming and the links that we've shared. Holly and Terry, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today. Um, and we just want to say thanks. Thanks for sharing some of your time with us.